To have marketing, you have to have buyers and you have to have sellers. And in this video, you're going to discover, are you a buyer or are you a seller? There's a big difference. Have you gone over that hump? I am going to share a story with you today of how I found out how a major company has been sucking money out of us for years. And it wasn't until I spent a visit with my mother this weekend that I discovered it. And it was like, wow, it just a big light bulb went on. So I want to share that story with you today because I hope it influences you to realize that you want to stop being a buyer and become a seller. And there's that, there is a big difference. We're created a culture of buyers and you don't want to be one of those buyers. You want to be on the outside and that small percent that's a seller. Now, before I go into the story, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I have a video every Tuesday, every Friday, where I help you turn your passion into profit and help you create different income streams using your passion. Now, don't forget to hit the notification button either so that you can be notified when those videos come out. Let's jump into the story, my weekend visit with my mother and how my eyes were opened. Now, I'm going to give you a little hint. I want you to look at this picture. And then I have another one. See if there's anything in that picture that will give you a hint of what major corporation that has been sucking money out of us for years. There's one there. And there's one there. You probably can see lots of those little boxes. My mom and I were, were spending some time in her backyard just, you know, cleaning flowers, going, you know, weeding the flowers, getting all that cleaned out. I always help her weed everything and throw all the dead grass over the fence and things like that. So we were having a really nice afternoon. So mom tells me, she says, well, why don't we clean out my shed? Of course, inside I'm like, oh, I hate cleaning out the shed. My mother tends to collect a lot of things. Um, she was a child of her parents were went through the depression. So she was a child during the depression. And of course, some of those saving tendencies rubbed off on me as a child being raised during the 60s and 70s. And, you know, my mother always said, save it, it might be worth something. So we tended to hoard, you call it hoarding now, but back then we saved things because they might be worth something. So we, we did a good job. We went to the shed, we cleaned things out. I always, I'm always reluctant to do it because if you open up a space for my mom, she'll have a tendency to fill it back up. So I thought, all right, let's go ahead and clean it out. So we did get rid of lots of things. We we loaded up um, the back of two cars. We we loaded uh, to take to the Goodwill. So we did really well. Well, those two pictures that I showed you were items that we decided to burn. And I'm going to bring up the burn pile again so that you can see those pictures. But notice in the picture here, especially, you see a lot of Hallmark boxes. Now, how many of you, and I want you to put that in the chat right now, have a box full of Hallmark ornament boxes because the ornaments are going to be worth something someday. How many of you have those in your house? Or maybe your parents do if you're younger. Um, I know the younger generation has, thank God, um, lost some of those tendencies. But we threw away a huge, huge amount of boxes. And I, it just struck me. I thought Hallmark is smart. They sucked us in so that we, we would collect their ornaments in collections. Now think about it. Every year you would go back and buy more ornaments to add to the collection. And did you ever notice that the collections rarely ended? You always had to go back the next year and get more pieces, more ornaments to add to the collection because they never stopped. And it's interesting. That's how they kept you back coming back to buy. There never was going to be an end. I don't know of any collections that did end. If they did, they probably had 30 or 40 pieces. The point is, as a marketer, this was brilliant on Hallmark's part. They had you coming back every year for more and more and more. And they kept telling you that these were collectibles. People are going to give you more money. And I'm sure there are collectible items out there, but are your ornaments collectible? Did anybody come to you and offer you hundreds and hundreds of dollars for your ornaments that you've been collecting? And all those boxes that you saved, did anybody come to you and say, I have to have that box? No, that's why we decided we weren't going to keep the ornaments boxes. So we decided to have a great big bonfire and that's how we got rid of them. So end of story. That's how we learned the hard way that you don't need to collect all that stuff. But as a seller, as a marketer, I just thought, how brilliant is that? Now, I want you to look at yourself. I was also excited to know that for me, I have no desire to buy Hallmark ornaments anymore. I have no desire to buy lots of things. I can remember 
years ago when um, the Franklin Mint would put out plates, these plates are collectible or those coin sets and all these different things. And again, I'm sure there are items out there that are very valuable and maybe they are, I don't know. But I, I just feel like a lot of companies use that word a lot, collectible, just so you can come back and keep buying to add to your collection. And it's just brilliant because there are still people still buying Hallmark ornaments. They're still buying them because they want to collect them, pass them on to their children who don't want them. <laughs> you keep buying them. So that was my lesson for you today. I hope it was kind of fun, but it just struck me that, oh my gosh, Hallmark is brilliant. And um, they're, they're, how much money have they made off of us because we were buyers, but hopefully you've become the seller, the marketer, and not the buyer, but pay attention to things like this. Like what are other companies doing to suck us in, to get us to spend our money on their products and then find a way. And it's not that I want you to suck people in. Don't misunderstand my purpose here, but find, look at the way they're doing their marketing and how they get people to spend their money. People love spend their money. So it's up to you as a marketer to give them something to buy. That is a value. I don't want you sucking people in, but think of the, look at the things that they're doing and look at the times when you spent your money. And now you turn around and look and go, my gosh, I wouldn't even do that. Um, mo the majority of the population are buyers. A very small percent of people are the marketers that are successful. So figure out which one you are and keep working towards that and pay attention to these companies so that you can start making better decisions. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Now I've got the